So here we're going to use the first law written in differential form and definition of Gibbs free energy to derive the Clapeyron and the Clausius-Clapeyron equations which relate for vapor and liquid equilibrium saturation pressure to temperature. So let's let's start off with the the first law writing in differential form and we'll write it for the case where we have a reversible process and you'll see why we're doing this. It's because we can now write dq reversible in terms of entropy change in temperature and we can write work in terms of pressure and volume change. And now what I'm going to do is since I'm interested in Gibbs free energy, I'm going to write differential form definition, if you like, of enthalpy in terms of U plus PV. And now I'm going to substitute from this previous equation, DU is TDS minus PDV. And I'm going to expand the, this term as PDV plus VDP and you'll notice that these two terms cancel and so then I'll rewrite the equation. I'll now write the definition for Gibbs free energy and also write the differential form of the equation. So now what we're going to do is substitute this into here and let me pause and make that substitution. And then for this last turn, I'm going to do as we did before and expand it out into two terms. And again, we're going to notice that this term cancels with this term. So I'll rewrite the equation. So if we imagine we were to start with a liquid and vapor in equilibrium and vaporize some more of the liquid, for example. This equation says that if I vaporize, starting the liquid, pause for a second. If I were to vaporize at constant pressure or constant weight, this takes place at constant temperature. And so that says going from liquid to vapor dg must be zero because there's no pressure change and no temperature change. That is, the Gibbs free energy to liquid equals the Gibbs free energy to vapor at a given temperature where we have vapor-liquid equilibrium. If I went to a different temperature, that would indeed also be true. And so, if I were to make comparison slightly different temperature and therefore slightly different pressure, the Gibbs free energy of the liquid would still be equal to Gibbs free energy of the gas at the new condition, which means any change in the Gibbs free energy of the liquid must be identical to the change in the Gibbs free energy of the vapor as we go from, say, temperature 1 to temperature 2. So. So this must be true. And now, since I know that dg is equal to this, I can substitute. We're looking at two temperatures and two corresponding pressures. So let me write that. So here's the equation written, substituting in for dg in terms of dp and dt terms. And notice now I have written pressure as PSAT since we're looking at saturation pressure. Why well, can't, I'm going to rearrange this equation. So again, I'm going to pause and do that rearrangement and group together the DT and the DP terms. So in order to simplify this, I'm going to go back to our definition of Gibbs free energy and Gibbs free energy for a vapor H well, I'm going to also write the same thing for a liquid. And of course, I set Gibbs free energy of liquid equal to Gibbs free energy of vapor because we're looking at these two phases being equilibrium. Now I'm going to rearrange these two terms that are equal. Well, delta, this H vapor minus H liquid is delta H of vaporization. 
I'll bring this t from the other side of the equation. And likewise, the right side is delta s of vaporization. And so I'm going to go back now and substitute in here for delta s of vaporization in terms of delta h of vaporization and t. So I made the substitution and also put the dt term on the right side and the vapor volume of vapor and volume of liquid on the left side. And so this then is the Clapeyron equation. And so just from a pretty simple starting point of the first law and our definitions, we show how saturation pressure is related to temperature and heat of vaporization. Now this is for vapor and liquid, but equivalent equation is true for solid and vapor equilibrium, where the volume change obviously is the vapor in the solid and we have the heat of sublimation. And it's also true for solid liquid equilibrium, where then we have delta H for, for melting. We can further simplify this if we substitute for the vapor in terms of the ideal gas law and we assume the volume of the vapor is much greater than the volume of the liquid which would be true if we're looking at relatively low pressures. So we let's make that substitution and I'll also simplify. So, so let me rearrange and simplify this where you We'll note that this pressure that was in denominator of the denominator is now in denominator on the other side of the equation. So let's simplify this equation a bit. And what we're going to do is, is look at differential of 1 over t, which might be easier to visualize as this. And so the differential then minus 1, t to minus 2, differential t, or I can write this as dt over t squared with a minus sign. And likewise, we can look at the differential of the natural log of psat, and that's equal to 1 over psat times the differential of psat. So you can see we're going to make the substitutions into this equation, we're going to substitute for this term, and then of course the right side. And we make that substitution, those two substitutions, we end up with the heat of vaporization over R minus sign, and now the differential 1 over T equals differential of the log of P set. Well, this equation is known as the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, and it's often seen in an integrative form where we first make the assumption that delta H of vaporization is constant, and so over not too large a temperature range, that's a pretty good approximation, and then you'll see it the integrated form between two limits, temperature T2 and temperature T1, corresponds to saturation pressures P2 and P1. And, and so this also is, if you like, another form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation that relates the saturation pressure to temperature. So if we know heat of vaporization and we know the saturation pressure at one temperature, we can calculate the saturation pressure at another temperature.